Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back. This is Usama here. And in this video, we will be learning how to set up a personal booking calendar for one-to-one -one meetings using Go High Level. So on my screen, you can see a personal booking calendar that I've already created and it offers slots to people who want to learn French and they can easily book it with a single host. And this type of calendar is usually helpful where you're doing one-on-one -on -one meetings, either virtually or even physically. If you want to type in an address where you would want that meeting to happen, you can still use this personal booking calendar. So let's jump into our sub account and see how we can set it up. All right, once you are in your Go High Level sub account, head over to calendars and then click on calendar settings and then click on create calendar and here you'll find personal booking. So just click on that. So we'll give it a name here first and then you can also add a description here. So let me just paste that. And by default, you'll see that the team member would already be added and Go High Level decides it based on who is creating the calendar. So if I was creating the calendar, you'll see that it automatically populated me as the team member or as the host for this calendar. But if you wanna change that, you can easily delete this one and then select another team member from your staff. Then we'll scroll down and set up a custom URL for the calendar. So let's just paste that. And then for the meeting duration, I'm going to keep it at 30 minutes. So you can choose whichever suits you. And then for general availability, you can customize it. So let's say we want to do Mondays to Thursdays. We can take off Friday from here. And these will be the generic timings. And then if you want to accept payments for this type of calendar, you can easily enable it and then type in the amount in the description. That's completely up to you. And in order for this to work, you need to have a payment gauge for your provider connected like Stripe or PayPal. So I'll just disable it for now. And then we're going to head over to advanced settings to have a look into some more settings. All right, once it has opened up, the first thing we have is meeting details where you can attach a logo if you want. And we already have the name and description pre-populated since we already did that in the first step. And then we have the group. So if you have a group set up or folders, you can categorize your calendars better if you wanna show them under a group. Right now, we're just gonna skip that. And then we have the custom URL here. So you can customize it. This is already pre-filled as per the last step. And then we have the meeting invite title. Now, as you can see, it says that this is the title for the calendar event. So once somebody makes a booking, they get an option to add this meeting as a reminder to their calendar, right? So once they add that appointment to their calendar, this is the title they will see. So right now it says contact.name, so it will definitely say their name, but it would just say that. So it's always a good idea to put something here which jogs their memory as they're booking for a French lesson. So we can type in something like French class for 30 minutes or something. So this is what they will see on their calendar. And if they have a very busy schedule, it's always good to have some description in there so they can know that they have a French class coming up. So once this is done here, you'll get an option to select team member. So you can change that here easily as well. So let's say I don't want this person here. I can select myself. And then if you scroll down a little bit, we'll see an option to add a meeting location. Now, the person booking calendar does support the physical address as well as the virtual ones. As you can see, we have Zoom, Google Meet in there or even the phone number. So if you select the full address, it already pre-populates the system field that it fetches from the sub accounts location. But if you wanna change that, you can override it here easily. In this case, we're gonna do a Google Meet or Zoom. So I have selected Zoom here. Now this is a native integration that Go High Level offers with Zoom. So it will automatically generate a link and send to the customer. We can also integrate another location. So let's say somebody prefers Google Meet. What we can do is add another location. So we already have Zoom connected and now we can also do Google Meet. So this is really cool. They can choose the one that they prefer. And then based on that, the meeting will be booked. So let's have Zoom and Google Meet both available here as our locations. And then we're gonna head over to availability, which is the second step in the calendar. Now here we have general availability. So you can easily customize it based on your availability. And you can also add in custom availability or add breaks if you prefer. I'm just gonna remove that from here. You also have an option to add the specific R. So if you're available on certain days outside your weekly routine, or if you're unavailable on holidays or custom days or vacations, you can easily select that by here. So let's say I wanna mark myself unavailable on Wednesday, all I have to do is select that and then hit delete here and it will make me unavailable for that specific day. And once I hit submit, now this setting is saved. And even though I have Wednesdays available, but because of the date specific R, I'm unavailable on this date. So it will override this setting for that specific Wednesday. Now, if I scroll down, we have some more options like look busy settings. So if you wanna come across more busy and hide certain slots intentionally, you can enable this and hide a percentage of slots randomly. So I'm just gonna take this off for now. And then we have an option for recurring meeting. Now recurring meeting only works when you do not have custom availability setup. 
So if I remove this, you'll see that the recurring meeting option becomes available again. So if I enable it, we can choose a frequency on how many times this appointment would repeat. So if that is the case with you, you can easily enable it, maybe because some people want to take these lessons on recurring basis. In that case, it would really make sense. So that is completely up to you. You can easily decide a frequency that best suits you. You have options like daily, weekly, or monthly, and then you can decide the number of times it should repeat, like four to six. The maximum number we have is 24, so that is the limit. Let's do four for now, and then we're going to proceed to decide meeting intervals and meeting durations. So we're going to keep the same thing for now. And then for minimum scheduling notice, I'm going to put in one day so I do not get same day appointment. So I can avoid that. And then for date range is where you give an option to the user that how far can they book in an appointment with you into the future. So if I put in 14, they will only see the next 14 days of availability where they can pick a slot and book an appointment with me. Then we have maximum bookings per day. So let's say we want to do three for now. So three is maximum that I want to take in one day. And then maximum bookings per slot per user. That is one by default here. That's fine. And then we have pre buffer time or post buffer. So this usually helps when you have a very busy schedule and get meetings back to back. So this is a custom setting that is up to you. You can put in five minutes here or you can even put hours. So these settings are subjective to everybody. Then we're going to head over to forms and payments. And here you can decide what type of form do you want because as you know, when somebody picks a slot, they also have to give in their information. So by default, we have first name, last name, email and phone. And if you want to change that out, you can create a custom form inside of Go High Level and then replace it easily. And then if you scroll down, we have pre-populate fields or sticky contacts. This is usually helpful if somebody already has visited your website in the past and they've given information. So if they come back again, it will automatically pre-fill the information and they won't have to type that again. And then we have the consent checkbox. If you want to enable it, you can do so. You can also disable it if you want. And then you also have an option to add guests. So in this case, this is one-on-one -on -one class. So I want to disable this option for now. And then for confirmation page, you can decide the thank you message. So if somebody books, this is the message they will see. Or if you want to do a redirect URL, to a thank you page or maybe you have an upsell you can easily decide that here and then put in the url and also put in the pixel id if you're tracking it with facebook pixel then the next option we have is auto confirm new calendar meeting so if you enable it by default the calendar booking will be confirmed and that is what the user will see so if you want to disable it you will manually have to confirm the appointments from the appointment settings and then the last option we have is accept payments. So you cannot currently enable it because of the setting we have for recurring meetings. So if you have recurring meeting enabled, you cannot collect payments as of now. So if you want to pick one of the either, you can decide that based on your use case. Then we have notifications, additional options where you can define who gets notifications. You can enable contact or assigned user, and you can also add an additional email separate by commas here if you want to notify somebody else in your team or company. So that will be helpful. And then we can also allow Google or Outlook calendar invitations. Then the next option we have is assign contacts to the respective team members each time an appointment is booked. So what this does is if somebody did not have an assigned contact before and if they book a meeting, they will actually get the host as the assigned user for the contact. And once you select this, there's another option that unlocks, which is skip assigning contact if somebody already has an assigned user. So this is self-explanatory. If somebody already has an assigned user, then the above setting will not come into play. The last setting we have here is cancellation reschedule policy. So if you want to enable rescheduling or cancellation from the customer's end, you can enable this option. And then you can also decide if you want the rescheduling or cancellation option to go away. Let's say that if you want to avoid last minute reschedules or cancellations, you can do one hour here. So one hour before the meeting, the rescheduling option will go away and then the same goes for the cancellations as well so i'll just do that here and now you have a setting in place where you can avoid last minute changes into your schedule and then under additional notes this is what the person booking the appointment will see so they will see your phone and email and also the reschedule or cancellation links so if you want to customize it you can do so this is what shows up on the calendar in white when somebody accepts this into their google calendar or outlook and then the last option we have is customizations where you can customize the primary color or the background. So based on your branding, you can easily customize the colors. You can also change the button text to, let's say, if you don't want to say schedule and you want to say book a call or book your French class. In this case, that would make more sense. So you can easily customize that. You can also choose to enable or disable titles, descriptions, and details. So that is up to you. And then towards the end, we have a custom code option. So if you want to play around with the CSS or if you're somebody who is familiar, you can put the codes here and then play around with it. Once you're happy with all of these settings, we're pretty much good to go. All you have to do now is hit on save and all these settings will be saved now. And once it's all done, you can find your calendar here. We'll click on the three dots here, click on share. You have an option to give a scheduling link. 
You can also do a one-time link, and then you can also embed it into your website's landing pages. So I'm just gonna open the scheduling link for now. So let's go ahead and open it. All right, so here you can see the person booking calendar in action here. So the first thing that you'll notice is that there's not a lot of slots available initially, and that is because we have a few settings dialed in. Number one, we're skipping one day here because we have one day minimum scheduling notice, and then we only allow the next 14 days to be available. So counting all the days from here, and the 14th day will be on Monday, so it's only going to give us the availability within the 14 days, which will be these days that we're left with here. So if I select a date here, let's say the 17th here, then select a time, and then I'll enter in my content information. And now you'll see we have a preferred location option. And as you saw that we connected two locations for this account, the cool part is that now we get an option to choose our preferred location. So if I select Zoom and book the meeting, that would be the location for this meeting. But if I prefer Google Meet or that is the option I have, I can select that one then click on this consent box right here and then book the meeting and you can see it says book your French class here as we customize the text. So if we select this now, the location that would be saved for this meeting would be Google Meet, which is pretty cool. And within a few seconds, we have our appointment scheduled. All right, so that was a step-by-step -step guide on how to set up this personal booking calendar and go high level. I hope you found some value in this video. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and we'll get back to you.